Very good evening. Is audio video fine? On the other side, kindly respond. Is audio video fine? Anyone? Any student? Kindly respond. Is audio video fine? On the other side? Kindly update in the chat box. So myself, Dr. Deepak, will be taking a session on abstraxis. So for the next few minutes, we will be discussing the segment of abstraxis. I will be trying my best to teach you how to concise, concise, concise. Clear? So the main motive behind this session. Let me just refresh from my side. Just one second. Kindly update in the chat box. Is the audio video fine? Very good evening, everyone. Dr. Sangeeta, very good evening. Dr. Pragya, very good evening. Let us use this opportunity. Let us use this platform. Dear students, very good evening. Yes. Very good evening, especially, especially good evening to the students sitting in Canada. So, better just the students sitting from Canada just feel such an awesome platform where we are. This is what the COVID have taught us how to use this online platform to teach all the students across the globe. So very happy new year beta. All the students welcome on this platform and I will be just use 30 minutes, 35 minutes to just give you a strong message how to concise the notes. My aim is to give you a message how to concise the notes. This is the need of R in MBBS where we have to study multiple books but at the end of the day we should concise so before starting the topic before starting going in the depth of the topic i just want a promise from every student just make a rule of thumb just make a rule of thumb okay, whenever you are touching any topic whenever you are touching any topic just revise before sleep just concise the topic just make a principle before sleep i will concise whatever i have studied in the whole day I will concise before sleep take my word it helps a lot clear so let us start with the topic of abstract it's a very small topic but very conceptual very is an emergency so there's always a mcq on beta one of the student is asking for which batch this is not for viewers. this is such this is just a small demo session to teach a student whether you are my third year student intern post intern hardly matter to me just the point is we should be conceptual so anyone on this platform just sitting with me just focus your eyes on the board for next few couple of minutes concentrate abstractions your books they have given three to four pages on this topic mcq mandatory why emergency topic emergency topic when you are internship in the internship you must be having these patients in emergency in ent opd so let us crack one by one now we will divide we will divide this segment into three parts just try to learn at the end i will teach you how to concise the whole topic our aim is to divide this topic into three parts one is the anatomy what is anatomy which arteries are responsible which arteries are responsible for the supply all these things am I understandable and the second point will be second point will be areas which areas are there which areas are responsible for apostaxis and the last will be your management part. Beta one of the student is asking, asking again for which batch. This is not for any batch. This is for every medical. This topic is for every medical. Even if you are a first year student, you will love this topic. So let us start the game. I will start teaching you the basic blood supply, which are the arteries. So for obviously, when you want to discuss the topic of apostaxis, so your first point is here, which arteries are responsible. Now listen carefully. Your books, they have given a paragraph, but I always motivate my student to draw a simple line diagram. So I will draw a simple line diagram of your nose, nasal septum. This is my septum. This is lateral wall. That's it. Very simple, simple straight effort. Which arteries are responsible for supplying the septum? Just remember. Now, instead of writing a paragraph, I will draw a simple line diagram. And which arteries are responsible? Five arteries supplies your septum, anterior, ethmoid, posterior ethmoidal sphenopalatine greater palatine superior labial i want everybody should write in nice way this at the end i will teach you how to concise all these things okay so what is our motive like your textbook of ent is giving 
seven pages, six to seven pages on this topic of hypertext, we will concise to one and a half page. At the end, we'll concise into few formulas so that we can revise again and again. So which are the important arteries supplying your septum, anterior ethmoid, posterior ethmoid, sphenopalatine, greater palatine, superior labial. Now coming on the lateral wall, which are the arteries supplying lateral wall? Enter it mod. Is it same? Yes. Posterior it mod? Yes. Is there? Sphenopalatine? Yes. Is there? Greater palatine? Is there? Superior labial? No. Instead of superior labial, we take superior dental. Can you appreciate? We take superior dental. It means that we have somewhere six arteries. Four arteries are common. Enter it mod, posterior it mod, sphenopalatine, greater palatine. These are common, but on septum, the more contribution of superior labial and less contribution of super dental. On the lateral wall, it's vice versa. I am understand, but this is what we If you go in the depth of anatomy, arterial supply of nose, different books may have different opinion, but as for your MCQs are concerned, this is a nutshell concept. I am understanding. Now, listen carefully. What is the beauty of line diagram, beauty of concising the topic? Everybody, every student sitting across, I am very happy a student from Canada, if he's attending my lecture, is an honor for me. So just appreciate any medical college, we have to learn a art of concising. What is the art of concising? Anterior ethmoid, posterior ethmoid, branch of ophthalmic. I will not write the whole word ophthalmic because I have 19 subjects. I will just write, just Ophthel, O-P-H, bracket, internal carotid. So what is my first formula? My first formula is anti-ethmoid, posterior ethmoid is equal to ophthalmic, is equal to internal carotid. The second formula, waiting for you, concentrate. Sphenopalatine, greater palatine, branch of maxillary, I will write M, bracket, external carotid. That's it. So sphenopalatine, greater palatine, they are branches of maxillary artery. They are branches of maxillary artery, which is a, in turn a branch of external carotid. Hence proved the first important statement which your PGI Chandigarh aims people like in INICT now all the institutes are centralized. So they will be asking you important statement. Hence proved. What is proved? Nose is supplied by external carotid as well as internal carotid artery. External carotid, internal carotid artery. Now, for the sake of MCQs, I will add two more points. Yes, superior labial, close your eyes, labial, 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 facial. So when you speak or when you pronounce labial, you get a feel of facial, is a branch of facial, which is again a branch of external carotid artery. Can you appreciate? I'm writing the key points. I'm not writing the whole statement. Superior labial, a branch of facial, which is in turn a branch of external carotid. No matter, we have to concise. Superior dental is a branch of maxillary is a branch of maxillary. Are you getting this point? So this is some way we are writing, we are writing two or three paragraphs in form of formulas. Clear? I want in the chat box waiting for you. Yes, very nice. A few students are replying very nicely in the chat box. I want you should respond which artery is known as artery of epistaxis. Which artery known as artery of epistaxis? Anybody? I'm waiting for your reply. Which artery is artery of epistaxis? Any student? Anyone waiting in the chat box? Absolutely yes. Artery of epistaxis, sphenopalatine artery. So the first important point, which is a favorite MCQ of your examiner, very nice response coming in the chat box, very nice, is sphenopalatine artery, is an artery of epistaxis, often repeated MCQ. Clear? After learning, after learning this basic arterial supply, after learning this basic arterial supply, of your nose. We will go to the next level now. Concentrate on the board, everyone, every student. We will discuss the areas. Now, once you are master of the basic branches of basic arteries supplying your epistaxis, now we have to do the mastery of areas. Which areas are responsible? Now, listen, just I am using this platform to teach you how we should concise. Listen carefully now. <laughs> I want to teach you, I want to teach you four areas of epistaxis, four areas, three epistax areas mentioned clearly in your books. One is the extra edge, which I will discuss at the last. So which are the areas? Just, just relax your mind, just make your orientation. Where, where, where are these areas of epistaxis are? Two areas are on septum. 
if I touch my finger, if I touch my finger on the empty part of septum, just, just learn, relax your mind, stop writing beta. Till now we have just written five arteries supplying your septum, five arteries supplying your little wall. I'm again using this platform on the behalf of Dam's family beta. Our aim is to make the things simple, very simplified. And we promise you, our aim is only to make the thing simple and concise. So just listen, learn, absorb the art of concising the things with us. Clear? So first of all, learn the concept, then I will write for you. You can copy easy. So which are the areas? We have three areas which bleed in other sexes. Two areas on the septum, one area on the lateral wall. So I take my finger, I touch my anterior part of nose septum. When I touch the anterior part of septum, I have two areas. Okay, I make him just mental picture that two areas are there. One area is just be behind the columella. Now, what is this concept of columella? I will teach you in detail. Listen carefully. Because many students who are uncomfortable with the word columella, I will explain. Nothing to worry. Just concentrate. Take your finger. Touch this midline part of your nose. Midpoint of your nose. This area. What we call columella, how this columella is formed. So first of all, learn the basic anatomy, how this columella is formed. This is my nose, this is my septum. Upper one third of nose, upper one third of nose is bony. Middle one third of nose is upper lateral cartilage. And lower two, one, lower one third is lower lateral cartilage. So the, what is the concept? Concept is upper one third, upper one third is always straight. Middle one third is straight, but lower one third is inverted U shape. It is inverted U shape from both sides. So lower lateral cartilage, what you call in your books, they use the word allied cartilages. They have two parts. Which parts? Lateral part and middle part. I am confident you will never forget. Lateral part, middle part. Again, focus your eyes on the board better. Everyone, every student. Upper one third straight. Middle one third straight, lower one third inverted U shape, having two parts, middle part, lateral part, lateral part forming lower one third, medial part, middle part of right side, combined with the middle part of left side to form midline structure known as columella, known as columella. Am I understanding? So whenever you touch this point, this these things should be on your tips. What is columella? Columella is the midpoint. How it is formed? It is formed by medial part of lower lateral cartilage. So just beneath the columella, if I draw the anteroposterior line diagram, if this is my columella, just behind columella is a arterial plexus. I'm happy many students are responding absolutely better. One student responded, kissel back plexus. This area, first area is known as Kissel back plexus, also known as Littles area. I will write for you, nothing to worry. If this is my columella and there is a plexus, arterial plexus on this, which is known as Kissel back plexus, so obviously it will be one source of bleeding. Now what is the other source of bleeding? I move one centimeter behind. If I move one centimeter behind, there is one vertical vein. If a vertical vein, if a vertical vein is moving behind columella so beta can i use a word retro columellar vein yes what is the main motive behind this word retro columellar vein never ever come mug up the things you should prove the things where is, where is this vein this is a vertical vein running behind columella we call it as retro columellar vein all india aims people this give a statement retro columellar bleed is more severe bleed is a false statement. I will explain to you why. Retro columnar vein. Vein is a vertical vein just behind the columnar. It's a very mild bleeding is coming. I will explain all these things. So just remember two areas which are responsible for bleeding on your septum. Kissel back and retro columnar vein. Now, I take you to my OT. We do endoscopy of the nose. Touch the lateral wall. Go along the lateral wall. On the last end of the lateral wall, I am waiting in the chat box. But before that, one of the students in running, yes, absolutely, it is Woodruff plexus. So third area, which is on the lateral wall. Which part of the lateral wall? So most posterior, most posterior part of lateral wall, Woodruff plexus. So I have three areas, two on the septum. Which part of the septum? So anterior part of the septum. One area on the lateral wall. We are doing imagination better. Once we have learned the concept, we will concise in form of a table. This is the only motive of this session. So two areas on the septum, one area on the lateral wall, posterior part of the lateral wall. Let us make a table 
of the areas of epistaxis from anterior to posterior from anterior to posterior areas are kissel back plexus known as latus area next 5 minutes very crucial i will be teaching you how to concise the things kissel back plexus latus area second retrocolumellar vein rcv retrocolumellar vein and the third area woodruff plexus woodruff plexus latus area retrocolumellar vein woodruff plexus woodruff plexus no here comes the art of concising beta just remember the marks the difference in the marks in the medical college is not on your academic knowledge is on your art of writing or art of presentation in the viva i have seen many toppers top rank in inict or top ranks in your neat examination who didn't score good marks in prof but always remember our target is final post graduation entrance examination so always I, i have seen many students who are very master of writing many paragraphs but when you come on the concepts they are lacking many concepts always prefer making the concept am i understandable so just try to learn this art of concising how what the toppers do they try to concise the thing so that they can revise take my word across the country every student is having these dams notes but what is the difference between rank 1 and the last rank rank 1 use his or her art of concising our dams class notes this is what you have to learn so now i am teaching you three areas now let us concise the game anterior anterior posterior can you appreciate the can you appreciate the beauty of this table we are not writing the full form anterior anterior posterior septum septum lateral wall septum septum lateral wall so kissel back plexus anterior part of septum retrocolumellar vein anterior part of septum woodruff plexus posterior part of lateral wall now come which is arterial which is venous sir arterial first arterial second sir retrocolumellar vein the word itself is telling me is venous is venous what is woodruff plexus now here comes the contours now here comes the role of dams what we are giving we are giving authentic answers beta you open the guide books many books are saying woodruff plexus is arterial no it is not arterial it is venous 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 just remember this point w itself is having two v's so it is venous 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 i am understandable always remember it is venous in rush it is venous in rush okay now coming on the age of distribution what is the age of distribution the mnemonic for age of distribution now here comes the simple simple tricks how to learn the tricks yes what is the age of distribution any student sitting with me who can explain what is the age of distribution as you move inside as you move inside increase the age child as you move inside increase the age child young adult old age child young adult old age always remember child young adult old age clear child young adult old age most common cause of litters area bleed nose picking trauma nose picking that is trauma i am just writing short forms no trauma nose picking trauma most common the epileptic patient five year child they have a habit of just picking the nose enter part of nose they have just habit you can say patient child pediatric therefore litters area no speaking retrocolumellar vein no specific cause there is no specific cause dr parth absolutely yes young to old and last is your hypertension so woodruff plexus is your hypertension i'm just trying to concise the whole one page of your textbook on a single paragraph on a single table so three areas the first we have discussed anterior part posterior part then septum or lateral wall then arterial venous then age then cause capital letter below this table now just appreciate the beauty of concise notes just below this table i write a formula anterior epistaxis is more common but less severe focus your eyes on the board anterior epistaxis more common but less severe posterior epistaxis less common very 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 severe all the students who are attending my lecture first time but i just take a strong message from me 
we are here to concise the things because many students who are attending this demo session first time they must had this feeling in the morning that this dance people will bombard with big big concepts not at all beta we believe in simple teaching we believe in conceptual teaching we believe in concise teaching we want you should revise multiple times i am understandable anti epistaxis more common less severe posterior epistaxis less common very very severe now everybody across the country across the globe sit students sitting with me focus your eyes on this table we can write more than 30 statements 30 30 statements i can make from this table i am understandable i can ask you multiple mcqs which of the following is a false statement which of the following is a true statement i am i am just teaching you how the faculties they make different type of mcqs you feel ke yeah we have to study a lot no this is a nutshell from which i can make multiple statements i will start for you you people should tell me thanks for the compliment parth dr partha concentrate bleeding in 5 year old child is venous nourish bleeding in 5 year old child now focus your eyes if you have revised this table 5 to 6 time bleeding in 5 year old child you people should tell me is it true or false you tell me true or false true or false bleeding in 5 year old child is septal nourish 5 year it means pediatric patient means septum bleeding in 70 year old 70 year old male is traumatic in nature 70 You focus. It is old patient. No, it is hypertension. Bleeding in five-year-old child is arterial in nature. True. Bleeding in twenty-year-old male is venous. Twenty. I mean, young adult. He is talking about somewhere venous. Yes. True statement. I am understanding. Bleed in seventy-year-old female is easy to control. Is it true? No. Seventy-year-old female. It means old. Means posterior. Means woodruff. Means hypertension. Means less common. very severe can you how i am making different different statements with the help of a simple table this is the way we have to learn the things so now there is no no phobia of any mcq they can ask you anything from this table they have permutation combination they can make multiple statements we have many columns they can make the mcq clear so just be confident and never ever run behind a quantity i have seen many students they run behind a the quantity they try to just mug up everything not possible not possible this table will crack will help to crack all the mcqs i am understand but after learning after learning the basic anatomy and your sites of epistaxis i will give you one important extra edge point anybody student sitting with me any student sitting with me who can tell me which is the fourth area of bleeding fourth area of bleeding present on posterior part of septum is venous in origin anyone any student posterior part of septum venous in origin posterior part of septum woodruff no woodruff is on the posterior part of lateral wall so what i am talking about now what is this one posterior part of septum venous fluxus any student we call it as very good excellent we use a word browns area we use a word browns area so posterior part of septum there is a venous plexus known as browns area excellent very nice students sir dr upasana very good nice responded absolutely true clear after learning the browns area and all the areas of epistaxis these are the important causes now all the third year students sitting with me take my word the causes in every topic the causes remain nearly same like it is idiopathic yes trauma yes inflammation yes it can be tumor like juvenile angiofibroma what is the keyword any student who can tell me epistaxis topic angiofibroma is very important very important angiofibroma in the topic of epistaxis so it is a benign tumor benign tumor which is a keyword keyword will be young boy if in the mcq they mention the word young boy take my word every topic have a keyword once you wind up the topic once you have revised the topic always make a habit always make a habit to take the keywords am i understandable so just remember this point angiofibroma the keyword will be young boy it can be vascular tumor many many congenital syndromes are there which are related with the blood vessel which may the patient may present with epistaxis it can be surgical trauma yes epistaxis commonly in surgical trauma it can be because of structural abnormality like septal spur or septal perforation drugs and which is worth remembering point cocaine 
producers because vasoconstrictor cocaine is a potential vasoconstrictor we have seen in some of the patients who are on uh, who are suffering from this abuse cocaine abuse they may present with apostaxis so these are the long list for all the interns post interns nobody will ask you in mcqs but yes for all the third year students when they ask you a short note on apostaxis they want this thing they want that you people should write all these points clear yes very nice. dr harshita this is not a class we are just having a discussion on the topic of apostaxis this is just a demo session to teach you how to concise clear so beta all these after learning these causes what we have done till now blood vessels which are the arterial supply then what are the areas of apostaxis we have discussed which is the artery of apostaxis venopalate and artery at the end we have learned the important concept at the end we have learned the concept k brown's area brown's area venous plexus venous plexus on the posterior part of septum on this platform just we want to share with you beta just start doing whatever is possible i have seen many students i have seen many students they feel can know it is not possible that i can complete all the 19 subjects if anybody any student across the country if, who is going to appear in the month of march in the upcoming neat examination beta don't waste your time here and there to find out when will be the neat exam when what will be the date of neat exam forget beta forget just next two months dedicate dedicate just play the best game in next two months and do i am talking about that student who have not studied anything till now beta kuch nahi pada beta do mahine bache hue i i got many calls of many, uh, many students ke they i got messages ke sir we have not prepared anything for the upcoming neat so when is your new batch is starting or all these things forget beta don't don't just miss the next neat examination we know the student were not prepared till now you will be definitely going for the neat 2022 but don't miss the upcoming exam if you are eligible for upcoming exam appear for the exam you have completed only one subject two subject hardly met i am just giving a strong message for the beginners those who are just starting their studies for the next neat next neat means next year neat 2022 for those students make a target i will complete my three subjects i will complete my four subjects till march and i will appear for the neat exam very sincerely take my word just make a target that those four subjects mcq should not be wrong i am not concerned about the remaining 15 mcqs never ever have the phobia of appearing on the exam ke i will appear i don't know anything forget but it will give you a nice experience for the next neat i am this message is for those who are beginners who have just started they are eligible for neat but they have not studied anything no issue next 60 days just try your best appear for neat and take a experience which will pay you in the upcoming neat examination so never nothing is impossible beta when you start you will get this message whatever is necessary you just start coming back to the next point after learning the arterial supply areas of bleeding i teach you the management part now what is the basic management part if i am your exam day in viva you are my third year student i will tell you but what is the first step you should do in epistax even in non medical no what is the best step in controlling the epistax so anyone any student who can write in the chat box what we should do what you will do obviously i will pinch the nose yes pinching the nose pinching the nose stop maximum epistax how much percentage of the epistax 90% of the epistax I ask my patient now just try to learn. I I ask my patient to pinch the nose for five minutes and spit out the blood. We call it as Trotter's method. We use a word Trotter's method. Pinch the nose, spit out the blood. We use a word Trotter's method. Trotter's T R O T T E R. Trotter's method. Pinch the nose, spit out the blood. We use a word, Trotter's method. Now I will tell you what happens in emergency. Most I have encounter with this thing many times. Like how how the patient present, and this is the biggest blunder. Many patients, especially from the villages, they do this blunder. So listen, how is the presentation? Twenty year old female. Now listen and enjoy this one. Twenty year old female. She will land up in emergency with severe apostaxis. With severe apostaxis. My JR. in emergency he will call me ke sir some patient of apostaxis in emergency i rush to the emergency i see there is a young female 20 year old female severe apostaxis i take the basic initial uh, steps to control the apostaxis and side by side i am taking the history from the patient so this 20 year old female give the history listen carefully sir yesterday what happened 
आई हैड स्माइल एपस्टेक्सिस इन द मॉर्निंग ओके बेटा दैन देन सर आई कॉल माई बॉयफ्रेंड माई बॉयफ्रेंड टोल्ड मी द बेस्ट मैथड टू कंट्रोल एपस्टेक्सिस इज टू पिंच द नोस देन आई आस्क इज योर बॉयफ्रेंड ए मेडिको नो नो ही इज नॉट मेडिको बट ऑन गूगल ही सच के पिंचिंग द नोस कंट्रोल द एपस्टेक्सिस ओके देन देन बेटा देन माई बॉयफ्रेंड सजेस्ट मी माई बॉयफ्रेंड टोल मी यू पिंच द नोस नाइंटी परसेंट ब्लीडिंग विल स्टॉप टेन परसेंट ब्लीडिंग विल बी देयर विच विल गो बिहाइंड इन योर नोस ओके बेटा देन देन सर ही टोल्ड मी टू स्वेलो द ब्लड ओके वाई वाई यू स्वेलो द ब्लड सर सर ही टोल्ड मी कि एटलीस्ट यू शुड सेव टेन परसेंट ऑफ द ब्लड यू शुड एब्जॉर्ब दैट टेन परसेंट ऑफ द ब्लड फ्रॉम यर स्टमक ओके बेटा देन वॉट हैपन सर नाउ इन द मॉर्निंग आई हैव ए सीवियर अटैक ऑफ एपेस्टेक्सिस टिपिकल हिस्ट्री ट्राई टू एप्रिशिएट वेन द पेशेंट इलिटरेट पेशेंट दे दे जस्ट स्वेलो द ब्लड इट has been proved the blood component they induce vomiting so what we have seen in these patients after first mild attack of epistaxis they have severe vomiting because they try to absorb everything they try to just swallow everything and once they have vomiting once they see the blood in the vomitus they got panic am i understandable that once the patient get panic the second episode of epistaxis is always severe severe so this is what is advise him what we have to give advice before pinching the nose ke never ever never ever swallow the blood you have to spit out known as trotter's method so what is trotter's method is it pinching the nose no pinching the nose which spit out the blood is trotter's method 90% even as a medico you should give this advice to everybody never ever do this blunder ke jo bacha hai usko absorb karenge aisa koi funda nahi hota hai just remember so just remember trotter's method control just pinch the nose spit out the blood patient not respond If patient is not responding, then we have the next step is that we have to go for packing. But if the patient respond, if the patient respond, what we can do? We can go for chemical cautery in my OPD or in my emergency. Even we can do chemical cautery. Even nowadays we are having endoscopes with which we can do cautery very nicely, very comfortably. So I will be sharing the flow chart with you. Yeah, how we manage the patient? Patient comes to me. After initial nasal preparation, pinching the nose, everything, patient not respond. Then, if if the bleeding point is visible, bleeding point is visible, patient is not having significant bleeding. I can cautery with one percent silver nitrate. I can do cautery with one percent silver nitrate. If bleeding is not there, I can go for anterior nasal pack. If bleeding is not there, I can go for antenatal pack. If you are in a tertiary center like medical colleges or on the we can have endoscopic cautery important concept if endoscopes are available we should go for endoscopic cautery if it is controlled well and good if it is still bleeding we can go for anterior pack always always remember we always try we always try anterior pack first why we try anterior pack first because it is more common anterior apostasis is more common but even if the patient still is bleeding now here comes very potential mcq i have done I have used Trotter's method, not successful. I have used cautery, not. I have done got endoscopic cautery, anti packing, not responsible. Till this point, focus your eyes, everyone. Till this point, examiner will give you the history. Till this point, examiner will give you the history, and then they will ask you. Then they will ask you what is the source of bleeding. Now you tell me. If the patient is not responding, just focus your eyes. If patient is not responding to Anterior pack. What does it mean? Bleeding is coming from posterior. Am I understandable? So commonly, posterior ethmoidal artery can be the source of epistaxis. Are you getting this point? Somewhere, if the bleeding is not responding for anterior pack, we suspect posterior ethmoidal artery, which is a branch of again internal cavity artery. So this way, if bleeding is not responding even to posterior packing, then the last option, if the bleeding is not responding to posterior pack, we can go for T E L S P A trans endoscopic ligation of sphenopalatine artery trans endoscopic absolutely Dr. Pasna Adeline so it can it can but the only one point we have to consider one of the students is asking can we use Adeline yes we use very less percentage just making sure patient should not be hypertensive patient should not be hypertensive clear telespa they ask you the full form of T E L S P A trans endoscopic ligation of sphenopalatine artery trans endoscopic ligation of sphenopalatine 
palatine artery clear so this is the way we will manage the patient trans endoscopy so which artery we like it sphenopalatine artery now all the students who are attending this session and they are preparing for INI CT exam they can ask you a important concept very favorite of your AIMS people AIMS people always they go one step ahead so the question they ask they give is typical history they will give you a 50 year old female hypertensive not complaining of epistaxis not responding to any initial method trotter's method was failed chemical cautery was failed patient is not responding to epistaxis on endoscopy focus eyes on endoscopy on endoscopy there was a bleeding on endoscopy there was a bleeding coming from <coughs> sorry there is a bleeding coming from an area above middle tabinate just listen the history again 50 year old female hypertensive just complaining of epistaxis not responding to any method trotter's method or failed packing was not successful cautery was not possible to do on examination on endoscopy there was a bleeding above middle tabinate there was a bleeding above middle tabinate capital letter inverted commas above middle tabinate this area is supplied by anterior ethmoidal artery a for above a for anterior ethmoidal artery this is a exceptional scenario this is a exceptional scenario where we go for ligation of anterior ethmoidal artery beta. this can be a INICD MCQ anytime clear so above middle tabinate is a clue for this is a clue for anterior epistaxis. This is a clue for anterior epistaxis. Can, can you appreciate? I have taken a very small topic. Not just try to learn. I have taken a very small topic epistaxis. Then I taught you the concepts of epistaxis and the motive is to concise, concise, concise. Focus your eyes on the screen. Listen carefully, beta. How to revise within two minutes. Epistaxis. Five arteries. Anterior mod, posterior mod, sphenopalatine, greater palatine, super labial septum. Little wall, anterior mod, posterior mod, sphenopalatine, greater palatine, super dental. Then in a mind, anterior mod, posterior mod, ophthalmic, internal carotid. Sphenopalatine, greater palatine, maxillary, external carotid. Super labial, facial, super dental, again maxillary. Simple. Artery of epistaxis, sphenopalatine. Then three areas. Litus, retrocolmular, woodruff. Anterior part of septum, anterior part of septum, posterior part of little wall. Arteries, venous, venous, child, young adult, old age, trauma, nothing, last hypertension, that's it. I write two statements, anti-epistaxis, more common, less severe, post epistaxis more common, le uh, less common, very severe. Then management, trotter's method, chemical cautery, packing, first we try, anti-packing, patient not responding, post packing, in between, if you are a third year student, now you have to mention, okay, I have to treat the underlying cause patient is hypertensive so my main concern will be to control the under like happening any systemic disease which is causing epistaxis what is the last option last option is tell us with one exception above middle tabinate and treatment you tell me within two to three minutes we revise the whole topic of epistaxis this way we have to do am understandable some way we have to concise the things all the interns post interns sitting with me beta this was just a small 45 minute session for you just to give you a kick yeah this way we have to turn this momentum is required at this point of time all the post interns who are preparing for upcoming need and they have like i have given you the mess message for those students who are just beginners not message for those students who are working 24 into 7 i am saying in the chat box our old students are there and first of all thanks to my all these students who are again on this platform to just attend my lecture to just listen to my words to those students who are working hard with us for the last one year better nobody nobody can stop you in getting your dream branch this year you people have worked hard with us in the covid take my word on the day of the result you people will remember my words you will get you're going to get a awesome rank dr partha everyone every student sitting with me on this platform who are attending this session again this 45 minutes were attending with me again just i promise you you people will be getting awesome rank awesome rank and you will be getting your dream branch clear just point is okay next for next days next two months better you people are very lucky you are getting more time just feel okay instead of in jan we are having the exam in march so you are having ample time just revise nothing to add anything kuch nahi add karna beta even if you Attempt 6 MCQs out of every 10. If you crack 10 questions, 
you will get ranked in top 500 i promise you beta so why to run behind all the 10 mcqs main motive behind this session for all my student damn students sitting across the globe just focus on your class note lalach nahi karna beta dams ke class note se eight mcqs aayenge pakki baat hai do question nahi aayenge main aapko bata raha hu kyunki there is no limit in a medical field clear do question 880 to 90% will be a strike rate out of which if you crack six mcqs you will be getting rank in top 500 you will be getting delhi and mumbai so what more is required what more is required am i understandable all the beginners want to join us anytime most welcome i am even sharing my code with you this is a referral code you can use on the e medicos you will be getting discount apart from discount you will be getting the zoom session with me you just text whatsapp me i will organize one to one interaction zoom interaction you can discuss throughout the years most welcome and i promise on the behalf of dams family every faculty will give their best and our aim is just to make a every to every student the dream branch am i understandable so just the motive behind conducting this session to make you realize ke yeah we can do anything but we should have the intent we should have the you can say appetite ke yeah i have to crack and promise you people can do anything never ever feel ke i am every student i cannot get rank in top 500 or top 100 forget here all the rankers they just focus on the confidence so be confident we are with you best of luck thanks for listening to me again thank you